1978, the jazz rock scene was so big and the players were so full of energy that people from other bands that were already recording were participating in the sessions of up-and-comers and some people who were just joining in on the fun momentarily and never to be heard from again. Such was the case of an album that came out of England that year by a partnership, Wilding and Bonus, which ended up featuring the backing of several players from Brand X and some other people that will be seeing some surprises on this one. But anyway, from that album, track three, Odyssey. <laughs> Beautiful um, chords in a G minor tonality, um, emphasizing certain um, accents of that, and with that rattle of the percussion. Yeah, I love that guitar sound right there, kind of Spanish guitar with the uh, piano. And Those flute-like keyboard tones I think we're hearing are... Crafty bass work by the one and only John Goodsall. Drums by Greg Sheehan. And keyboards by Bayette, yeah, the um, guy from the, uh, <clears throat> who was in, um, he, Automatic Man, yep. And uh, let's see here. On the album, uh, Danny Wilding plays flute, so that probably is actually, it, it, it's so soft, but it, I was kind of thinking, but yeah, Danny Wilding on flute, and um Peter Bonus on guitar. And it seems like this is like the only thing that either of those two ever did other than maybe like one or two appearances on some like minor albums. <laughs> that part that that is like the ultimate earworm that 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 refrain right there so our wilding and bo the, the wilding bonus guys um basically uh, bonus is, is, is bonus is giving us that bloom, 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 and some of the Spanish e guitar that we've been hearing, and Danny Wilding is is giving us that refrain that da 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 da. So so between the two of them, they they really are making this track. But um, there's also some good support on here. But um, the kind of like a oh like kind of hi hat laden uh, rhythmic structure is provided by Greg Sheehan, an Australian drummer who had been in the early 70s Australian jazz rock band Mackenzie Theory. And I'm just finding out now that there was a, um, a link between this and Mackenzie Theory. I, I didn't know that till now. Um, <laughs> It 
it's interesting that John Goodsoul is playing bass on this rather than um, guitar because he was the guitarist in Brand X. Percy, whereas Percy Jones um, played frontless bass in that band and had a very distinct bass sound. And, and this is obviously not Percy Jones' bass work. Um. Sprinkly little keyboards, little tinkly, little like diamondy sparkle. Yeah, quite a mine of talent on here. Um, Phil Collins, of course, appears on the album, just not on this track. He appears on three of the songs. Um, let's see, Dick Cuthel has a hand in this. Yeah, the um, guy from Trifle, yeah, um, who later played with the specials. Um, and uh, Bayout, of course, from uh, the two Automatic Man albums. And um, the mo oh, and Mike Shreve, also from Automatic Man, and um, Stone We Must Just Go, and of course um, Santana plays on like one of the tracks, or maybe more. and um, most surprising of all, Kate Saint. Kate St. John appears on this um, years before she surfaced in Dream Academy. Um, I actually wasn't aware that she was around this early. I associate her more with the 80s onward. Um, like Virginia Astley. Um, in, in the early 90s, um, she did an album with Bill Nelson and Roger Ean. Um, appeared on Daryl Hall's second album, but yeah, I didn't associate her with, with this going back this far or the late. Oh yeah, Channel Light Vessel was the band she was in with, um, Bill Nelson. Um, yeah, I didn't, yeah. Um, actually the other guy from, uh, from Dream Academy, the, the vocalist, he, he was, he was around this early too. He was in a band called Alpha Alpha. Anyway, since that was over so quickly, um, let's hear another song from this album, Pleasure Signals. Um, I guess the title is inspired by the cover, which has the two guys, Wilding and Bonus, um, walking around on these giant nude women's bodies. Yeah. Um, let's hear the next track, Earth Hymn. <coughs> Beautiful piano over Marshall drums, and this time on this track, the drums are played by Preston Heyman, and keyboards are by Andy Clark. Uh, is it? According to this, it's 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 the Bebop Deluxe guy. It's it's it's. I shouldn't say my Andy Clark because I like both of their. I, I like both Andy Clarks for what they've put out, but um. I've known I've known. This I've known the Bebop Andy Clark a lot longer because I've been a Bebop Deluxe fan since 1990. Um, yeah, um, that's you know I just found that out right now. I had no idea that he appeared on this album the same year that um, Drastic Plastic came out.
tell you the truth, I would find it a little bit more believable if it was actually the raw band, Andy Clark. Um, but the, the up raw band, Andy Clark. But I can't quite 100% trust the accuracy of Discogs on, on this one. I, I would need a bit more confirmation than just a link through to um, Simon Andrew Clark's profile. <laughs> Notice how the flute um, is kind of like doubling up on the piano. It, it, it's all it. it, it Almost like like to the note exactly, yeah. Danny Wilding's flute, and um, perhaps Andy Clark's uh, keyboards. If it's not if it's not Robin Lumley who's giving us those lovely piano lines. track is credited to uh, John Giblin, um, who would become involved with Brand X a bit later. Um, before this, though, he had played on uh, the Metro album, was was one of the support and was was also was basically in orbit with uh, Duncan Brown, yeah, one of the backing guys to the core of Metro, who who went with went on with Duncan and um, also um, the. Gonzalez, Lenny Zakatek, um, Grapevine as well. Um, and even appeared on uh, albums by Steve Harley, um, The Chanter Sisters. Heck, even uh, Jacob Magnuson, the Icelandic guy. Um, oh, um, one of the albums by Jim Rafferty. Yeah, the second. Uh, by the, uh, Jerry's brother. Here, um, John Goodsell, John Goodsell, who plays bass on this. John John Goodsell is, is is actually doing some quite clever things with the bass. He 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 appears. It sounds like he's doing harmonics on it, like pull off type things. <laughs> Uh, th those notes, the the sustain, the the way that they kind of the notes kind of bend as they sustain, no, kind of makes this such like a compelling kind of like almost like rainy day through the window type type number. <laughs> that vibe, like like sad yet 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 beautiful.
Uh, this drummer, Preston Heyman, he was in the Tom Robinson band. Huh. That's quite, uh, quite a stretch from this. And uh, played on albums by Brian... F he played on The Bride's Trip Bear, and he played on, uh, I guess, the first solo album by Noel McCalla. Um, the ex Moon, who was in a band called Moon, put out a couple albums, and then um, later uh, sang lead vocals on Mike Rutherford's Small Creep Stay album. Yeah, and then um, and then appeared on the 1980 comeback album by Atomic Rooster, one of their best. was it that made that song so beautiful and compelling? All those sustained notes, all those slow, rising, falling notes, all the little droplets, the tinklets, sprinkly sounds, sustained, bendy tones, minor keys. Yeah, the kind of push-pull rhythmic structure, all like slow for the most part but like sometimes like a like a pause other times kind of like a kind of almost like kickstart in a way yeah a lot of just a, a lot of those push pull rise fall type contrasts over just beautiful simple yet effective key centers yeah Earth Hymn by Wilding Bonus from the album Pleasure Signals, and before that, Odyssey. Two wonderful songs from an album that brought a lot of talent together um, from the jazz rock scene. Um, a lot of people who um, just had a lot of energy around this time and, and just a lot, of, a lot to spread. Um, and... Uh, yeah, from a time that was just very furtive and, yeah, when, it's just amazing, when, yeah, the amount of great albums that all these people appeared on when you put it together, it's just, I would say, I would say between, between all the people that appeared on this album, there might be, you, you might be talking like two, three hundred, like, notable albums like that um that these people spread and, and i i'm just thankful that that when these people were were young and at the height of their abilities it's it's like um I, some of these people i wonder if they it's almost like they never even ate or slept they were just constantly in the studio and laying down as as many licks as possible for posterity um, anyway, for more Rubies and Sapphires from the Wilding bonus album, see the directory of albums by English W artists. Um, Wilding and Bonus weren't really con or considered a, a real band per se. They're often filed like as two separate entities, like Wilding, separate slash bonus. But yeah, I, yeah, I got on the W page. Yeah, and uh, go there with um, albums from England W for all the great W acts, bands and performers that have emerged from the country. And then um, once you're done with that, go over to the B page in the um, alphabet to see the rubies and sapphires from the Brand X catalog. And like and subscribe and follow me on social media. And leave a comment if there are any observations you had about these pieces and parts that stood out to you about the instrumentation and such. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear travel trimaximalist, signing off. <laughs>